and we begin our journey on of course day one and just like any good Sturge Valley playthrough we begin by of course cleaning a patch of land and planting our crops afterwards I went to town to get even more seeds now I may not be the best player in this game but I know for a fact that you need more crops in order to make profits so that's what I did before heading back home, I decided to visit the local forest and get myself a few more forageables. While I was exploring, I found myself a few spring onions which will come quite in handy as right now we need as much money as we can get. I finished off the day by placing the seeds I had just bought and just clearing some areas for future plantations. I then headed to bed and at night I made myself quite a bit of cash. Honestly, it could be better but for now I'll take it. On day 2, using the forageables I got on day 1, I made myself some wild seeds. Now these are gonna be really useful later on, but for now we're just gonna have to wait for them to grow. After watering my plants, I went to the beach and got myself a bamboo pole, and using that rod I made myself quite a bit of profit as these fishers sell for a lot. I didn't just stop there however, so I went to the lake and continued fishing until night time and I was right to go fishing as that night I made quite a bit of profit. On day 3 and 4 I only fished. Yeah, that's literally all I did, so there's nothing really interesting that went on except for the fact that on each one of those two days I actually got myself two diamonds. Um, I don't know if I'm just being lucky or that's common. Either way, I'll take it. And of course, on these two days, I made myself a lot of money. And I mean, a lot. Day 5, I actually forgot to press record, so there's actually no footage. But here's a quick representation of that day. And if you're wondering, yes, this is hand-drawn. Basically, all my crops were grown, I got money, and I bought myself a large backpack. And then I just went fishing, that's all I did. And for some reason, my friend Unix Oak, who's another YouTuber, you guys should check him out, didn't understand that one bit. I think I just don't know how to draw. Day 6, again I only fished. Now I know what you guys may be thinking, this is boring as hell. Yes, I agree, fishing is boring, but it makes me money. So you guys are gonna have to understand for now. I mean, come on now, seriously, look at all this money I'm making. You can't tell me that I shouldn't fish. Day 7, after watering all my plants, I went around my farm and just collected wood and chopped down some trees because soon enough we're gonna need a lot of wood and I really mean it when I say a lot. Getting all this wood really drained me of all my energy so I had to unfortunately go to sleep very early. But hey, I guess I just needed wood, it is what it is. Day 8, I started making some space for a brand new project I was working on and this time around I needed to cut down a lot of trees. Last time I just needed wood for something but this time I need to cut down for the sake of making space. So yeah, I began chopping and after a while I was able to get a quite good amount of space, I can't lie. Cleaning the farm isn't really one of the easiest jobs and it really sucks the life straight out of you. So I went to sleep early because tomorrow is a very good day. Day 9, all my parsnip seeds were ready and even my wild seeds were ready for harvest. They look pretty cool, I can't lie. After collecting all my crops, I went to Robin and made her build a coop for me. Now, first of all, I didn't expect the coop to take this little amount of space. I mean, look at all this space I made and it only takes this much. Come on now. But I'm not complaining and I decided to put it next to my house so I can access my chickens any time of the day. Afterwards, while fishing, I got myself a creepy doll, which was apparently an ancient doll, but I don't care. It's creepy as hell. Later that night, I actually got a new fishing perk, which was the fisher. Now my fishes are worth so much more. Like, goddamn. That's a lot. Day 10, the rest of my crops have all grown up. That is pretty nice, but I don't have any use for them. After harvesting, I went into the caves for some stone and copper and almost died in the process. Like, damn. But at the very least, I was able to reach level 15, which I guess is a win. How come my fishers sell more than gems? That is weird. Day 11 was another day of cave diving, but this time around it went pretty smoothly I would say and I got a sufficient amount of stone and copper. Afterwards, I just went fishing because I need to buy even more stuff for the coop, so I'm gonna need quite a bit of money. And of course, fishing did give me a lot of profit. Day 12, my coop was finally ready but I had to move my mayonnaise machine because obviously they were in front of the goddamn door. But now I can finally purchase some chickens. I actually bought 3 chickens which I named Cock, Coke and Book. Very impressive names. 
I know. Oh my god, look how cute those guys look. Damn, okay, I really like getting chickens. So you know what, I'm gonna get more in the future. Unfortunately for me, however, I didn't make any money that night and paid a huge amount of money. So, yeah, I mean, still, I got chickens now. So that's sick. Day 13, after watering my crops, I went to the egg festival where I bought myself four strawberry seeds. Now, I don't know if they are good, but hopefully they are because from what I've heard, they're supposed to be good. After that, I of course took part in the egg hunt and I somehow won. I didn't expect to win at all, but I'll take it. I mean, Abigail is a pretty tough opponent, I can't lie, but hey, now we got a straw hat, which kind of makes me look like Luffy. Yeah, I'm out of here. I then ended the day by planting my strawberry seeds. Day 14, I paid Pierre a visit and bought myself even more parsnip seeds. After that, I went to the community center but couldn't understand whatever this was. After that, I went to Clint and got myself a few artifacts, but I just donated them all to the museum because I had no use for them. And just to finish off the day, I went to the mines to get myself some coal and some copper. However, I got swarmed by a million fucking insects, but I was successful at defeating them all. They deserved to die anyway. Afterwards, I did reach level 20 and got myself a new sword. How nice! Day 15, all my chickens had grown up and had given me some eggs, but unfortunately for them, I tossed all their eggs into the mayonnaise machine, cause I needed money. After committing murder, I went and collected some stones, which I then used to make Robin build me a silo. We're gonna need that if we want to feed our chickens, like, seriously, we need a silo. Since it was salmon berry season, I went to the forest and picked some up. I then visited the wizard, who was kinda weird, but he taught me how to read the thingies, so now I could actually donate stuff to the community center. And by doing so, you can actually get some pretty good rewards. As you can see, I got myself some wild seeds. At night, I was excited to see how much the mayonnaise would sell for, and I wasn't really disappointed. That's pretty good. Day 16, I got myself more eggs, which I turned into mayo. Afterwards, I collected my new forageables and even some salmon berries in the way. In the mines, I got more stone, which I then turned into furnaces, as I need a lot of them right now. Afterwards, I just went to sleep and got myself some profit. Day 17, I got myself even more forageables and collected some hay for my chickens to feed on. I then headed back to Marnie in order to get another chicken which I named Cuck. And yeah, this line sounds so mad. Of course, I did my usual salmon berry collection and then went back home to finish my chicken fence. Now this place looks great. Day 18, I increased the fence of my chickens and then collected my parsnip seeds to sell to Pierre. There I actually bought some gross stollers which I then put for my chickens to feed on. Now it's automatic. Afterwards, I actually changed the location of the silo and finished the day by collecting some salmon berry. On day 19, I went mining and then I completed a bundle in the community center and now the salmon berries are actually becoming useful as I need energy. After that, I just cleaned up the farm a bit and created a space where I would be planting some trees because I'm gonna need sap soon. Actually, we're making a lot of profits these days. Day 20, I mined the whole day because I had an objective in mind and damn, I hate these dark levels, I can't lie. Though we did reach level 40, which was my goal, and this is where we can actually get iron. I didn't stay for long though, as I didn't want to die. Our profit, however, is increasing, which is good. Day 21, I got strawberries, which was nice because they sell for a lot. Afterwards, I tried fishing in the caverns but quickly went down into the mines because I got nothing. I went for more iron and returned home to get some more hay to feed my chickens. I finished off the day by chopping down some trees, but my dog was being a fat ass and didn't let me inside my house. Why did you sleep there? I literally collapsed at my doorstep. I'm gonna chop his balls off. On day 22, the sakura leaves were floating and my parsnips had all grown up. I then went to Clint and began smashing some stones. They were all artifacts though, so I donated them to the museum. Afterward, I went to the mines to do some stone farming. Yes, you heard me right. I then finished off the day by chopping some trees. On day 23, I collected more wild plants and gave Clint my pickaxe in order for him to upgrade it into a copper one, cause I seriously need an upgrade. And then I went foraging a bit cause I didn't have anything to do and actually decided to fish. And I returned with quite the bounty. 
The 24, I got myself even more wild plants. I then went to the Flower Dance Festival where I bought myself a rare crew, which is pretty sick, but got rejected by every woman over there. So I just had to sit in a corner and watch the event unfold. At least, I'm getting very rich. Day 25 was relatively a very short day as I, soon as I got my copper pickaxe, I went to mining for stone in order to make preserves jaw. Yup, that's all I really did that day. Day 26, all my parsnips had grown, which was always welcomed, but the best part is that my chickens had given me my first large egg. How cool! I then went fishing for some money and made more preserves jaw. Now we're making serious money. Day 27, Demetrius gave me a visit and now I have bat fruits in my cave and now I can get fruits which is nice. I then went to the mines to get some iron for future plants and did a little bit of fishing just for some extra cash. Going back I saw the jam was ready and they sell for not bad of a price, I can't lie. Day 28 was the last day of spring so I went fishing to prepare for summer as we were gonna need quite a bit of money and then I went to sleep and it was time for us to welcome the summer season. Day 29 was the first day of summer and I was quite excited as we were gonna get ourselves some brand new crops. Of course I went to Pierre and bought myself a wide variety of seeds. Some blueberries, some melons and tomato seeds and to finish off I got some pepper seeds because we were gonna need it for the community center. I then went of course to forage and went back home to start putting down my sprinklers and placing my seeds. Honestly, now that I have sprinklers, that means that I won't need to actually water my plants, which is cool, but unfortunately I didn't have enough, so I made a patch of land which I will need to water manually. And after watering my plants, I went foraging at night and got the final piece I needed. Then of course, I went back home, I slept, and yes, honestly, it was a pretty good day. The jam as well sell for quite a lot. Day 30, after watering my plants, I went to the community center in order to get even more wild seeds. After that, I spent the whole day in the caves getting iron and copper because I wanted more sprinklers. Though, I think I stayed there too long because I literally passed out in front of my house. At the very least though, I am still getting my money. Day 31, I spent the whole day in the caves getting copper because obviously we're gonna need a lot of sprinklers. So yeah, I'm just gonna skip through this whole thing because yeah, it was boring as hell, I can't lie. Day 32, I was back in the mines getting copper, but not for too long as I was able to get back home quite early, smelt everything and make myself 19 sprinklers which I then placed down. I didn't have any seeds though so I was gonna have to wait for tomorrow. But for now, I think it was quite a good day and I'm quite satisfied. Day 33, after placing down all my sprinklers, I grabbed all my wild seeds and melon seeds and then planted them down. I still had space so I even planted some blueberry seeds. That night, I also completed a blacksmith bundle for a furnace, which was good I guess. My mayonnaise is also selling for a lot now. Day 34, it rained so I didn't have to water any of my plants. Afterwards, I went into the mines but then while coming back up, I realized this new place was unlocked. I don't even know why it was but... I don't really care so I just went back and finished cleaning my farm. I then fished until night time and actually got myself a pretty good amount of money. Day 35, I went to Clint and cracked a few geodes and donated all my artifacts to the museum as usual. I then went fishing because I realized I haven't been fishing for quite a while and it was even able to complete a bundle. After that, I didn't really know what to do so I just continued on fishing. And of course, by fishing, I made myself quite a bit of money. Day 36, I literally spent the whole day chopping down trees and placing tappers. It was a very boring day, so I'm skipping everything. Day 37, I went and grabbed my steel pickaxe from Clint. I had forgotten to mention it before, but now you do know at least. Though, while I was actually mining trying to reach level 80, I almost literally died to some ghost. Yeah, it was not fun, but at least I was able to actually reach level 75. We just need 5 levels to go. Ah, uh, it was not a good day, honestly. Day 38, I was back in the mines trying to reach level 80. And that I did, I was able to reach it quite easily. Though from now on, getting gold will be pretty easy, but the monsters here deal a lot of damage. So yeah, I was very often in the brink of death. Returning back home, I got some fruits for my bad fruits and had to go to sleep early because I was gonna die. Day 39 was the day of the luau, but I had forgotten to bring any ingredients, so it was pretty much worthless. But not totally worthless though, because look at this day! At the end of the day though, I didn't do anything that day, so we're moving on. 
Therefore, I was impressed at how beautiful my forage balls looked and afterwards I went mining for some gold and slowly but surely I did manage to make my way to level 100 though it was getting very late and I didn't even make it halfway to my house and well I passed out. Well I, at least I still got my money which is something I guess. Day 41 I went back into the mines and grabbed myself the Obsidian Edge which is considered one of the best swords in the game and finally I was actually able to reach level 100 which I had mistaken before for level 90 but hey now we got the star dew drop or I guess just the star drop I don't know but now we have more energy which is of course always welcomed and not only that after doing all this I went to the community center, finished another bundle and actually finished one of the rooms which again <laughs> is really sick. And now I actually have access to the minecarts because I know, magic I guess. Day 42 was the first harvest of summer and all my melons and blueberries had given me quite a bit of money I can't lie. Afterwards I went to the community center and got myself a quality sprinkler, not bad because they water everything around them. Afterwards, I just cleaned up my farm a bit because I had nothing else to do. At night, I got level 5 farming and chose the perk of Tiller, which basically means all my crops are gonna be worth a lot more. Day 43, I got even more blueberries which was always welcomed. I then went to the mines and just stayed there the whole day, but at the very least, I was able to make it to level 110. But that's all I did, really. Day 44, I chopped down a few trees and then made Robin build me another coop because I just wanted more chickens and of course even more profit. I then changed the location of the mayonnaise machine and made even more and then quickly realized just how much money mayonnaise actually makes. Day 45, I got myself maple syrup and even more melons. Afterwards, I chopped down a few trees, cleared up a small patch of land and placed down all my beehives. With these, we will be able to make even more profits in the form of honey. And at night, I got myself the level 6 farming which included the quality sprinklers. Now that's a nice day. Day 46, I got more blueberries, placed a flower for my bees to enjoy and placed down a few grass starters. Afterwards, I went mining and almost died on a mushroom level which would have been tragic honestly. But at the end of the day, I was able to reach level 120 and was awarded the skull key. It is not important right now but later on it will be crucial for our gameplay. At night, I made some huge profit like god damn. Day 47, I got more blueberries and collected more of my beautiful forageables. I then bought myself three chickens which I named randomly and went to the mines for some coal and iron. I then of course smelted seed iron and at night I realized jam sell actually for quite a fortune. That's not bad. Day 48, I spent the whole day inside the caves trying to get coal and iron. And that's all I did. Day 49, I got my first batch of honey which was pretty sick. I then again spent the whole day inside the mines trying to get coal and iron. Afterwards, I was a bit disappointed as I thought honey would be selling for a lot more. And we have arrived on day 50. Honestly, I'm quite impressed at how much we've progressed so far. But honestly, we cannot stop here. We need to progress even further. And on that day, I was able to make myself 30 quality sprinklers. It will be useful later on. It was also a blueberry day and I also made myself some lighting rods. But I was not too sure what their use are. Afterwards, I just spent the whole day inside the mines to get iron. And of course, got money at night. On day 51, my lighting rods actually gave me some battery packs but I didn't know what to do with them. Afterwards, it was just another depressive day inside the caves. Honestly, it is getting repetitive but look guys, I have to do this. Just trust me, I have to do this. Day 52, I gave Clint a visit and broke some geodes which I again donated the artifacts into the museum. Afterwards, well, guess what, another day inside the mines yeah that's sad but hey at least i'm still making money in it day 53 was a stormy day and i got more honey and also that meant i would get battery packs afterwards i went back into the mines but this time i'll tell you why it is in order to get quality sprinklers because in fall i don't want to be watering any of my plants and these are gonna be crucial for that Day 54, I got myself more melons and then went to the mines for some gold. Afterwards, I was able to complete a bundle and got myself some autumn's bounty, what? 
Afterwards, I cleared up a patch of land because I wanted to start placing down my sprinklers and after a while I got myself quite a good pattern I would say. And afterwards, I got a lot of money. Day 55 after collecting my blueberries, I went down and finished my sprinkler farm. I was quite satisfied with this one but I wanted more so I made a side sprinkler farm. Afterwards, I completed a bundle and then I went back home, I got level 8 farming and just some money. And we've arrived on day 56 which is the last day of summer and honestly on this day I just went into the mines to get as much ore as I could in order to make more sprinklers. Afterwards I just went down and watched the jellyfish dance thingy. Honestly I wished I could take one because these things look absolutely amazing but hey I guess this is where it ends. We now await fall. Day 57, it was full and honestly everything looks horrendous, it's almost like everything is dead and oh I guess it does make sense actually. But anyway I continued with my day and bought a crap ton of seeds which I had to plant manually because well I don't have an auto planter but hey it took me a while and I didn't even have enough seeds so I had to buy even more but after a lot of patience and hard work. I was finally, I'm kidding, I was not able to finish it, I literally passed out outside my house. Yeah, that sucked. Day 58, I realized I had made quite a mistake because obviously scarecrows doesn't water your crops, so I would have to actually manually water those. But except for that, on that day, I just kept on getting more seeds and planting them, and I went to get a mushroom for the community center, but yeah, I never actually got it. Day 59, after watering my crops, I went to the mines in order to get coal. Now, you might be wondering, why would I want coal? Well, basically, I wanted to make preserves jaw in order to get money. Well, I quickly realized that getting coal in this game can be quite difficult, so I spent the entire day there and didn't get much. Day 60, I was back in the mines, but I honestly don't know what I was doing there, I kinda forgot, but either way, I also completed a bundle on that day and got myself a keg which will honestly become very useful. Day 61, I broke some geodes at Clint and then of course donated all the artifacts to the museum. Afterwards, I went mining for a bit and to finish off the day, I went fishing, because why not? Day 62, I needed gold, so I went to the mines and spent quite a while there. I needed plenty, so I literally spent the whole day there. It was boring. Day 63, I had recently unlocked the recipe for kegs, so I made some kegs in order to actually get some money, and these are gonna be quite useful. Afterwards, I went to the community center and got myself one of those machines that recreates a gem. Also, those are gonna be very useful later on. Afterwards, I just went fishing because, again, why not? And then finish the day by simply mining for some gold. Yeah, average day. Day 64, I spent a majority of my time just collecting blackberries and afterwards I went to the community center and finished another bundle which gave me the wild seeds for the season of fall. Obviously, I decided to place more sprinklers in order to actually plant the wild seeds. Now, the farm is completed. Day 65, I got myself more honey and my cranberries had finally grown up, which was obviously awesome. Afterwards, I just went around cleaning up a few things and made myself two more bee houses. Afterwards, I made these weird looking machines which apparently turned slimes into a slime ball. I don't know, but I just went into the mines and got myself what I needed. At night, I actually made a large profit. Nice! On day 66, I continued on blackberry harvesting. Afterwards, I went and completed the vault bundle which now gave me access to the desert. Afterwards, I went to the farm and actually changed all the wooden fence with stone ones because they were degrading. And I will just say that these ones actually look better. Afterwards, the Junobos actually repaired the bus which was dope. I spent the entire day of day 67 just inside the caves because I needed copper and gold and that's it really, I just needed gold. Day 68, since the bus was repaired, I took a ride in it and went to the desert for the first time ever. And here we could actually use the skull key to unlock skull caverns which is basically a very hard cave. Honestly though, I spent an entire day there but pretty much got nothing, at least I was able to exchange a few artifacts but yeah, except that I just went back home, I think a fairy passed by, but I don't remember, but I had pumpkins, so I don't care. 
day 69 aha funny number but anyway i got myself some honey and just did some casual mining honestly i was starting to get bored because i was waiting for my crops to grow so yeah that's what i did day 70 i got some money from a random bloat called key afterwards i accidentally picked up the flower i was planting next to my beehive which was a disappointment but at the very least my cranberries won't disappoint me afterwards i just went mining because well again i was getting bored so i just mined for anything of value and at night i just started realizing that i'm starting to make amazing amounts of money damn that's a lot day 71 i collected all my forageables and then all my pumpkins had actually finished growing but honestly they were a real pain in the ass to pick up but obviously i wouldn't be able to grow any more of it as winter is right upon us so i bought some yams as i knew that they would be able to grow before winter and honestly i feel like yams are very underrated i barely even hear anyone talk about them but hey I'll still use them. On that day, I also finished another bundle which gave me a preserves jar, which was obviously dope, but afterwards I got myself the final dwarf scroll, which basically means I could now talk to the dwarf and I guess I think he sells bombs, I'm not too sure, but anyway, afterwards, at the end of the day, I got the artisan perk, which basically means all my mayo is gonna sell for more. Day 72, I got myself some corn which was nice and afterwards I went to the festival where I gambled a lot. And after gambling all my money, I actually got myself the star dewdrop and to finish off the day, I got myself another rare crew. Honestly, it was a pretty nice day. Day 73, I realized recently that I haven't been talking about my chickens too much, so basically they've been giving me a lot of large eggs, which was nice and afterwards I went and spoke to the dwarf but yeah he wasn't selling anything too good in particular so yeah i just left and then i went and cleaned my farm a bit because i wanted to do a new thing which was actually just upgrading my coop yeah i want more chickens is that a problem afterwards i just went into the mines and just did some mining at night i'm still making a lot of money Day 74, I gave Clint my axe in order to turn it into a silver one, or iron one I guess. Afterwards, I bought myself an iridium rod and I found this owl looking thing. I think it was very rare, I don't know. But afterwards, I just finished off the day by fishing. Yeah, I had nothing to do. And at night, I'm actually making a lot of money now. Like, look at this. Damn. Day 75, Robin had finished upgrading my coop, which was just a little bit bigger, but I'll take it. Afterwards, I bought myself some ducks, which I named randomly because I was too tired to decide a name, and Robin's work was unfortunately not done because she's also building me a barn. Afterwards, I placed a crap ton of crap pots. Hopefully, I actually get some profit from that. And then I fished. Not out of boredom, I just wanted to fish. Day 76, I received my gold pickaxe from Clint and since I had two hearts with Caroline, I was able to see this cutscene which was weird. Afterwards, I did my daily mining and coming back home, I was actually a bit surprised as all my things were actually ready like pickles and pumpkin juice and they are extremely profitable. Day 77, slowly but surely the amount of kegs I have is increasing which means more profit. Afterwards, I went to the desert because I wanted to actually explore skull caverns. I got myself some spicy eel to increase my luck, but yeah, I didn't get much. At least I got some Omni Geodes though, which was good, I guess. Day 78, Robin had just finished my barn, so I decided to add a fence. However, I couldn't buy any cows on this day because, yeah, money wasn't working, but that didn't bother me much because I just went mining. Afterwards, I realized I'm making a very good constant of our money. Day 79, I mined all day because money was still not working on Tuesdays. However, mining has been quite beneficial as I got myself level 10 mining and I went with blacksmith, which meant that metal bars will sell for a lot more. And of course, I'm still making a good amount of money every day. Day 80, I harvested myself some yams and even my cranberries had finished growing, which was nice. Afterwards, I actually got myself my first ever iridium bar, which was cool and since money was actually working today, I bought myself some cows, even better. And of course I mined. It's becoming a habit now, isn't it? At night, I'm actually making a lot of money now, like damn, look at this. 
Day 81, I cracked a few geodes at Clint and of course offered the artifacts to the museum. Afterwards, I collected all my yam which was very tedious work. But hey, now it's empty. That's cool. And afterwards, I just went to the mines to do some casual mining. And I'ma be honest, yams are really worth your while. I mean, look at all this money. Damn! Day 82, Gunther actually came by my house and handed me the sewers keys, which was honestly quite exciting as it was my first time ever visiting this place. Though I quickly realized, except for getting a star drop, there isn't really much around here. I then went to the ocean and checked on my crab pots, but I didn't really get much. Afterwards, I went mining and I think I got my biggest paycheck or earnings on that day. Yeah, that's a lot. Damn. <laughs> Day 83, I realized that my chickens can actually leave. Wow. Afterwards, I went to the desert and I tried actually going to skull caverns, but let's just say that I was pretty much underprepared, so I just fished the whole day and perhaps even night. Afterwards, or upon returning home, I decided to go to the festival, but yeah, even here is quite boring. The only thing I really got was the golden pumpkin, and that's it, really. Day 84 was a bit of a sad one because fall was finally going to be over and since summer I had made so much progress. I didn't really know what to do on that day so I went to Skull Caverns and let's just say that some accidents happened and I passed out. I didn't lose much but it was still a bit shocking and horrendous for me. But hey, at the very least, I got, I still got my money so at least we'll be prepared for winter because we can't be growing anything. Yeah. Winter is going to be a real nightmare. Day 85 was the first day of winter and honestly this is probably one of the worst seasons in this game as you literally can't plant anything but at the very least your animals can still provide you some profit but yeah it's not too much. Afterwards though I did find myself the magnifying glass which will help me find secrets. Afterwards I also finished another winter bundle which actually gave me access or will give me access to the bridge. Now that's sick. I also planted all the wild seeds I had taken from the community center and at night the Junobos finished the bridge. Tomorrow we are going there. Day 86 I had forgotten to mention before but my ducks had all grown up and they don't lay as much eggs but they do provide quite a bit of money. Afterwards I picked up my steel axe from Clint and went to the quarry where I found a new mine. Well, not exactly a new mine because it was just filled with these flying skulls and at the end I got myself a golden scythe. But I still don't know what to do with it so we move on. Afterwards I just checked my crop pots. Pretty good I would say. Day 87, I was not sure what I was looking for in the mines but I had spent the entire day there so hopefully it was for a good reason but other than that I made a lot of money. Day 88 and 89, I spent it all on exploring the skull caverns. Now what I was doing was actually getting used to the levels and slowly but surely, I could tell that I was improving and actually tackling these floors. I also found some cool levels but for now, it was just practice. I spent day 90 and 91 just going in the mines and gathering everything I needed in order to finally conquer Skull Caverns and it took me quite a while as I needed to smelt a lot of things and gather a bunch of items but at, at the end of the day, tomorrow we're finishing this. Day 92, after countless amount of practices over the recent days, I was finally able to tackle Skull Caverns and I'll be honest, with all the knowledge and experience I had accumulated so far, this was a piece of cake. I mean literally, I exploded my way through all the floors. It was just that easy. I just lacked practice and experience and yeah, pretty much I was able to get all the things I needed. I mean, iridium, iridium bars or ores, prismatic shards and even the galaxy sword, one of the strongest weapon in the game. But yes, I'll just let my inventory speak for itself. Day 93, I smelted a few iridium ores and then cleaned up my farm a bit before going to the ice festival where I actually participated in the ice fishing competition but I didn't actually think I would win but yes, I beat Willy, the literal fisherman in the town. How crazy. And I even am making a lot of money. Damn. Day 94, something quite special happened, I mean we got ourselves a meteorite but of course I decided to keep it as a souvenir because we already had iridium ores. 
Afterwards, I made clean break my few crates I bought. I got nothing much, but I might just say that winter truly sucks. I mean, what else except mining can I do? Literally nothing. Day 95, I gave Robin a visit and made her upgrade my house because obviously I've been living in a small hut so far. So yeah, I just want some more space just to put more items. I mean, it's really cramped in there. Afterwards, I visited the desert and went to Skull Caverns in order to get a few iridium ores. Now, I didn't really get much, but I did get some, but it was enough to actually get myself the upgrade for the iridium pickaxe. In two days, we are pretty much maxed out on pickaxes. Day 96, I gave Sandy a visit and tried going past the bouncer. I obviously failed, so I decided to fish in the sand for some sand fishers. I still got some, but... I don't think it was worth it, so I went to Skull Caverns, and since I didn't have a pickaxe, I only killed the monsters there. Afterwards, I went into the ocean and tried to get myself one of the fishes, which was a squid. And, well, I failed. Day 97, I started getting bored, so I went foraging a bit. Afterwards, I then just rearranged my stuff around my farm. Really, I'm getting very bored. But I decided to just go to the Stardew Saloon and just see what I can do there. I just spoke to the people, nothing much. Since I had gotten my Iridium pickaxe from Plint on day 98, I decided to dive into Skull Caverns and try to see how far I could go. Well, I didn't really get much, but I did find a prehistoric level where I killed a bunch of dinosaurs. I didn't get a prehistoric egg though. Day 99, I realized that my farm was a complete mess, so I decided to arrange a lot of things around it, and even my house is getting a lot better and more proper now. I enjoy living here, I can't lie. Day 100, since it was the last day of the series, I decided to actually go for one last dive into Skull Caverns with everything I had prepared so far. I would say it went pretty well and I even got to meet Mr. Keys, a mysterious guy who has been giving us money throughout the run. Honestly, he's kinda nice, I mean he even gave us a weird drink which gave us 25 max HP. Honestly. It's pretty good. Afterwards, I continued on with my adventure and got myself a bunch of iridium. And yeah, I will let my inventory speak. I mean, just look at all this. Day 101. Now you guys might be wondering, why am I doing 101? I mean, the series should end on day 100. That's true, but I actually wanted to actually finish my first year in the game. So we're continuing until the end of winter and basically i just went to the festival got some coffee and watched this weird mermaid show yeah i don't really like it too much i mean <laughs> okay i was gonna say she's kind of bad dude but yeah no not at all can't lie afterwards i put in a random code into this clam thingy and got myself a pearl that's a pretty good day i would say Day 102, I decided to pick up all my forageables and then went mining because obviously when I'm bored, I always either fish or mine. And guess what? I went fishing next because, yeah, winter genuinely sucks, I can't lie. Afterwards, I went to the show or the midnight market thingy and bought myself a painting. And I even did some deep water fishing, but I got nothing. Day 103, I kept killing sprites all day, I mean the sprites all day, but yeah, basically I just wanted the burglar ring which I should have gotten a while ago, but yeah, I still wanted it, so I just kept just killing the sprites, that's all I did. Day 104, I was fishing because I had taken a quest for Demetrius to catch 20 fishers, and that I did. Afterwards, I still went to the mines and continued on with my rampage. It's actually pretty fun killing monsters, I can't lie. Day 105, I made Robin upgrade my barn into a big barn so I can finally get some goats. After that, I went to Cinder Snap Forest and got myself a bunch of hardwood, something that I will need later on in my journey. And then actually upgraded or repaired the bridge at the seaside, something that I should have done a long time ago. Yeah, I've been missing out, like damn. Day 106 was extremely boring because I had nothing to do and literally went around town talking with everyone. But at least I did try to catch the squid that uh, Willy was talking about and yeah, I didn't get it. Day 107 was another Skull Cavern dive and I don't really like showing all the Skull Cavern footage because it's really just the same thing over and over again and I didn't even get things that I want like Utopedos but I did get something cool which was a cool cutscene with Shane at night. 
it was pretty wholesome I would say. Day 108, I had a scene with a bear where it apparently became my friend. It was quite odd but I kinda like it. Afterwards, I continued on with my hunt for the sprites. Obviously, I gotta kill them all. I need that burglar ring. Day 109, it was the last day I could ever actually pick those for Rage Balls, which was a bit sad but I was quite content. Afterwards, I made Robin build me a big coop because I wanted even more chickens. Afterwards, I also gave Clint my hoe to turn into a copper one. Yeah, it cost me a bit but I don't mind. I even actually bought myself some goats. Yeah, we just need... Wait, goats? No, the sheeps actually, my bad. And I finally got myself that burglar ring I've been trying to get. And I even tested it out on the insects in the mines. Long story short, it works. Day 110 was the feast of the winter star and my secret Santa was actually George and he gave me a jade. I will take it but it could have been honestly better, come on now. Day 111 was an extremely weird day because apparently I just went to the desert and got myself cactuses? That's it? Well, I don't know what I did that day but I guess that's it, yeah. Day 112, all I did was actually just kill some bugs in the caverns because I wanted to actually get some ancient seeds and yeah, that's it, those days are actually boring. Day 113, we've finally reached the end of this series and it's been a good ride, I can't lie, but obviously I still wanted to actually continue the series like probably make a 200 days challenge, but that's obviously up to you guys because Obviously, I won't be doing any other gameplays. These take so long to do, but obviously on the last day, I bought myself a ton of wood because on year two, everything becomes double the, the price and I don't want to be dealing with that. But yes, yeah, so far, I think we've done pretty great. I mean, yes, we weren't able to actually complete the community center, but we got very close. And I think soon enough, I'm going to make a different series, still Torju Valley, but this time, I may actually try to complete the game but overall I would say that yeah it's been pretty good I mean we got ourselves animals a pretty good farm I mean we got ourselves pretty rich and I've done a lot of things that I haven't actually done before I mean it's kind of a bummer we weren't able to reach ginger island but that's all right and yeah after doing everything that I had to do I finally just went inside my house and said goodbye to this world because obviously Unless you guys want me to, I won't be coming back to this world. So yeah, I slept for the last time, never to wake up again. Well, like I said before though, unless you guys want to. And obviously, I need a lot of money, so here we go, that's all the money we made. Oh, hello traveler, you seem to have made it to the end of this video. Congrats, why don't you take a seat? You must be tired by now. While you're recovering, here's two other videos you might also enjoy. Take your time and choose wisely. Your journey ahead is long. It is time for me to depart as well. Thanks for your company, traveler. I bid you farewell.